So thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my work on appearance, personal characteristics, and first impressions in credit markets. So first impressions are very important in many aspects of life. Uh, even in business, for example, when there are mergers, there are many teams who working on all the characteristics of the deal and the characteristics of the company, but then the CEOs still meet and play golf uh, to assess each other and to put an extra layer of information in their deal making. Similarly, when you go for an interview, you dress up, you want to show yourself on your best behavior, and you realize that the impression that you make to the potential employer will be determinant in your, uh, in your result. Even though your employer has been reading your CV, and he knows you know, your previous experience and everything about you, and you might think that this is enough, but in reality, the impression that you make is quite determinant. So in this paper, and you can find it online on the website, I look at how personal characteristics, such as beauty, race, the way people present themselves, affects the term of financial transactions. And I mean whether or not they are going to get a loan, uh, the interest rate that they pay on that loan, and even the default rate later on. I do this on a online lending website a and the reason for this is that this, uh, this website which I'm going to show you in the presentation gives you a lot of information. So it gives, you, uh, gives you the researcher access to information that is very similar to what the lenders are seeing. So we want to see, okay, the lenders will see something about these borrowers like credit scores, employment history, um, and they are the rest of their financial situations, but they're also going to see a picture and read a short uh, essays from these people that they say why they want to borrow. So this is an ideal laboratory for us to see, okay, once we have credit score and other financial information, does appearance matter? Does it matter for different people? And is it related to exposed performance? So the motivation, like I said already a little bit before, I is that uh, in real life, uh, in many situations, we have to make decisions, in almost all situations, uh, among various alternatives based on a limited amount of information. It could be the productivity of a potential employee, it could be the skill and integrity of a politician, even the suitability of a spouse. We don't know everything about uh, them before, uh, before getting married. So in the financial setting, when assessing the credit worthiness of a potential borrower or a different amount of borrowers, the lenders have some information on credit scores, uh, employment history, but they also have, there is still a lot of uncertainty about whether these borrowers will pay or not. Under these circumstances, these people might use easily observable characteristics, such as appearance, uh, beauty, gender, race, uh, and in general, the way people present themselves uh, to make an assessment about uh, the probability of repayment. So the question is going to be, do they do so? If yes, what is the mechanism behind their behavior? Why is it that they do so? Uh, is it a big phenomenon once we take into account uh, credit score and the rest of the financial information? And in general, are these characteristics related to exposed performance? What type of lenders care about character these characteristics uh, and are they right? So in economics, there is a huge literature about this. So part of the literature looks at economic outcomes in beauty. So there are a lot of papers that look at lawyers. And it turns out that lawyers um, have um, job market outcomes that are related to their appearance. So if you take the law school pictures in the Facebook and you control for their grades, previous jobs, uh, and all the information that you can collect, it turns out that people that are better looking are more likely to join a top law firm, work mo build more hours, become partners faster. And this is true in all type of jobs, even in jobs in which there is no interaction with the public. So you might think that if I am like a salesperson, maybe the way I look matters, but if I'm a computer programmer, it doesn't. It actually turned out that it do appearance matters in all this type of setting. And there has been research done, and what they people have found in experiments is that the reason why a beauty matters is because it's related to self-confidence. So people that are more beautiful get treated better all over their life. 
Even small children get treated better by their parents, their teachers, and so they build up more confidence, and this confidence is what helps them in dealing with their employers, with their customers, and with their colleagues. So it's been shown in experiments that even once you control for productivity, so what they actually do, people that are better looking are better perceived, so their employers think they are doing better, uh, and they're also doing better in dealing with other customers and in test of intelligence. So you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of things. Another trend of the literature is uh, racial discrimination. So there is a big amount of work, especially in mortgages, to determine does race matter on whether you're getting a loan or not, uh, and uh, the interest rate that these people have on mortgages. And there is a big debate. Uh, and so in this setting, we also see the race of the people. And one advantage of this setting is that we examine uh, the applicants both at the entry level, whether or not they get a loan, and then exposed uh, at the performance level. While in the past, the studies that have been made due to data limitations were like, so some type of studies have applications, and they find that the people from minorities are less likely to get a loan. But then you could go back and say, well, maybe they are worse in ways that are not on paper. Maybe they have a more volatile job or some other characteristics that makes them such that they are worse for indeed. So it is not really race that affects them getting a loan, is there are these other characteristics. There are other studies that look at defaults as post, and they find there is not much difference between minority and uh, non-minority borrowers after controlling for all the observables on their defaults. But there you can say, well, if there is a sort of some program that helps uh, or discourages minorities from getting a loan, then the group of borrowers that are from minority and the group of borrowers that are non-minority are quite different in characteristics. So the fact that they default at the same rate doesn't really tell us whether they've been discriminated or not, because they are a different group. So in this setting, we can solve this. And finally, you know, if you are a loan officer, how do you process personal information when somebody comes uh, to your bank and applies for a loan? So these are the strengths of the literature. Let me tell you the main findings, and then we'll go back and we'll dig a little more in the mechanism, why it is uh, that personal characteristics matter. So the main findings are the following. First, these lenders on this market are relatively rational. So the most important thing is hard financial information. You're more likely to get a loan if you have a better credit score, a better employment history, higher, higher salary, you are a homeowner, and all these other characteristics. Controlling all these, though, beautiful borrowers are 1.41% more likely to get a loan than an average-looking borrower with the same characteristics. Um, they pay lower interest rate conditional on getting a loan, 81 basis points left, but then, if we control for everything else, they are also more likely to default. <laughs> <laughs> this is the revenge of not, uh, not so attractive. <laughs> so uh, as a group, beautiful people have higher income, better credit scores, better jobs. So they default less. But if you control for this higher income, better jobs, uh, and better credit score, and you compare two people that are the same, one better looking and one average looking, you'll find that the better looking one is three times more likely to default on the market. So it seems that beautiful people are treated well in life, and so they have a lower cost, all else equal, on defaulting, because maybe they have other opportunities anyway, or maybe because the lenders put too much weight on their appearance, uh, and they were sort of misled by that. Let's look at the race. So black borrowers have the same likelihood of getting a loan, but conditional on getting the loan, they pay way higher prices. So they pay between 139 and 146 basis points more. And then if you look ex post, they have roughly the same, uh, the same probability of delinquency, even uh, after controlling for all their characteristics. So they have different socioeconomic characteristics, but uh, controlling for that, they have the same probability of delinquency. And we will go back and we will see that this is partly due to the counterparty. So this is a market in which there is 13% of black borrowers, but only 1% of black lenders. So if you are a black borrower, you need to attract uh, bids for your loans from uh, white lenders. And white lenders might uh, well, 
do charge a higher price to black borrowers in this market, and we will see, it could be for different reasons. Maybe they are not as good as screening black borrowers, and so they feel like, well, I'm not really good at reading and interpreting this, so I charge a higher price. Or the alternative could be like racism. So we will talk about this more. Since there are pictures, we can also check other characteristics, smiling, wearing a tie, being overweight, young, old, female, putting a picture of yourself at work, yourself on vacation, you with kids, or a dog. All these characteristics matter unconditionally, which means that if you just look at presence of wearing a tie and getting a loan, they are correlated. But once you control for everything else, credit scores, incomes, and so on, they turn out not to matter. So they are correlated with other characteristics that have already been captured. Finally, we will talk a little bit about the similarity between borrowers and lenders. There is a lot of research that shows that we tend to like and trust people that are similar to us. So does this have an effect in explaining our results? And finally, we will uh, conclude with something. So why is it that personal characteristics should matter? This is a question that goes back quite a lot in economics and finance research. So the first possibility is called statistical discrimination. It goes back to Phelps and Arrow, and the story goes this way. So I have a counterparty, let's say a borrower, and I know some characteristics about them, credit scores, but I know that is not enough to determine probability of default. But I have an experience. I've been a lender for a while. I've interacted with different type of borrowers, and I know that there are some easily observable characteristics let's say appearance and race, that are not important per se, but they are correlated with other characteristics that are not easy to be observed, but they matter. Let's say um, being Italian is correlated <laughs> with higher probability of default. <laughs> we can see. <laughs> so <laughs> you look at my credit score, and my, all my characteristics, uh, and you have an assessment. But then in addition to that, you know that I'm Italian, and you know that on average, Italians have been shown to default more often because they have a more volatile uh, government, let's say. So <laughs> what you're going to do, if you're rational, you're going to say, well, she's Italian. I'm not going to lend uh, as much as I thought I would have lent to someone else similar to her, but let's say from another country. And I'm going to charge her a higher rate because she's risky. Why? Volatile government. I cannot measure volatile government, but I can <coughs> easily use it being Italian as a proxy for that. So if this is the story, then people that have, um, so borrowers that are in the discriminated group, Italian, are less likely to get a loan. If they do, they pay higher rates. But then exposed, the lenders turn out to be right. Exposed, being Italian, will be correlated with higher default. And so this was just a way to capture this higher risk. There are more elaborate models, and Professor Calumir is here, has written papers on that, in which you can add an uh, extra layer and look at the lender's counterparty. So if the, other, if the lender is Italian, for example, maybe he or she is better at examining how Italians, uh, uh, at examining the characteristics of Italian. So if she's an Italian lender, she's like, yeah, it's true that Italians are on average riskier, but I can read Italians better, and so I can make better choices. I can discriminate across different Italians and see which ones are really risky and which ones are not. So at that point, the similarity of borrower and lenders matter. And maybe an Italian lender may choose to specialize on Italian borrowers because they have an informational advantage. So it's possible that we find results that are in line with racism, but in reality, it's just lenders' specialization and you know, uh, different amount of lenders of different types in the market. OK, alternative. The alternative is states-based discrimination. It goes back to another Nobel Prize, Becker, uh, and his uh, book in 1971. The story here is what we would call pretty much racism. So I know that Italian borrowers are as good as anyone else, but I have a disutility from interacting with Italian borrowers. As such, I'm willing to leave money on the table and avoid these Italian borrowers, even if I know I will get a good interest on them, because I don't want to interact with them. So if this is the case, what we should see is that borrowers from the discriminated group, Italians, are less likely to get a loan, pay higher rates, so it's the same as before, 
But now, if you look exposed as the, uh, their default, uh, you will see that it's not true that Italians are more likely to default. It was sort of like a prejudice that led this lender to get rid of Italians' borrowers, but it was not based on fact. So let's see the results and let's see what we find, what we find here. Before doing that, I'm going to briefly, in the, in the time that I have, show you how, it lo how this market looks. So you apply for a loan, you post your picture, they collect all your information. Here you cannot see it, but you can see it in the website, credit scores, and everything that a credit card company will see. You write while you want a loan, and people bid on it. So always in research, you ask, are the borrowers representative? Can I say something about the general borrower's market by looking at this sample? They turn out to be representative. So are the lenders. So the question is, uh, hmm, let's do this. How do we measure beauty? Uh, what do we find? Uh, and what are the rest of the results? So beauty is measured in, in, measured in this way. These pictures are analyzed by, se uh, by six different people, three males, three females, that rate the beauty of all the pictures. These were students, and you might think, well, maybe students are different, right? Well, it turns out that there is a lot of research that shows that beauty is not in the eye of the beholder. Across cultures and times and ages, it's quite constant what people define as beautiful. Somebody with a symmetric face, eye cheekbones, and certain proportions. And we can actually test, uh, is it true that people, that if one of the raters thinks uh, I'm beautiful, the other five also should think I'm beautiful. And if we measure the correlation across judgment, we find that they are. So these are the findings. If I post a picture, I'm more, li I'm more likely to get a loan. Um, if I'm white, I'm more likely to get a loan. If I'm a male, I'm more likely to get a loan. And if I'm beautiful, I'm also more likely to get a loan. Uh, uh, so this is a summary of the findings. So beauty helps uh, being from a minority doesn't matter unless you are black, in which case you pay a higher rate, uh, but you default less, uh, you are less likely to default. People that are overweight uh, are more likely to get loans. It seems that being overweight or less equal helps. And then there are other characteristics. And um, we can discuss later about overweight. There is a big literature that discusses this. So let me uh, tell you once mo one more thing, which is the similarity. Do these results depend on the identity of the lenders and their characteristics? And indeed, if you control for similarities, the results go away. So it's not true anymore, controlling for the lenders, that black pay higher rates. Why? Well, it turns out that if you look at the portfolios of loans that an average white lender and an average black lender has, you find some difference. So there are 13% black in the sample. So if you randomly assign loans, you will have 13% black borrowers in your portfolio. This is true for the white lenders, while the black lenders put higher weight on black people. They are also better at reading black borrowers. They have almost zero default on these black borrowers. The white lenders don't discriminate but, uh, on the race of the borrower when they assign the loan, but they charge black borrowers higher rates. They suffer defaults, but the defaults are not big enough to justify the difference in rates. And so they end up making more money on the black lenders. We do many robustness checks, let, 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 and let me conclude. So what we have looked a, a, a in at this paper is what happens um, if, uh, in addition to some hard financial information, you, should you can see the personal characteristics of your counterparty. Do they matter? How much do they matter and why? And what we find is that the characteristics of the counterparty matter after controlling for other financial information. And uh, they turn out to matter for beauty in a way that is uh, adverse for the lenders. The lenders end up putting too much money into above average looking people, and they face higher default. But for the race, the result is opposite. They charge too high of a price to the black lender. So this is our results, and I'm working on extending them to other sessions. Thank you.